All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I'm joined once again by my good friend, Druzy. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the more shocking results so far mm. in 2021. I thought making this list, it would be hard to scramble 10, but I actually had a few that I had to cut out. There's been a few surprise upsets or even just big comebacks in the year so far. Mm -hmm. And today, we're going to take a look at them from round one all the way to what is currently round 15. We're going to take you through some of the more shocking results. So we're taking you back to round one where there was actually three shocking results, Drewzy. But the first of which, though, was Adelaide versus Geelong at Adelaide Oval. And I remember we did two live streams this mm -hmm. day. We did uh, one in the morning and one in the evening. And we missed the absolute ripper that was this <laughs> game in between. The reason we didn't stream it, Jesse, was because we thought it was going to be a stinker. A grand finalist start side against a team that had won the Wooden Spoon the year before. It should have been an absolute cheek clapping. But it was a shock that Adelaide come through and won this game. So the Crows got out of the blocks very early. They kicked four goals to two in the first term and then broke out to a lead of 73 to 35 at halftime. 38 points. A lot of teams don't come back from 38 points down, but we're talking about Geelong here, the grand finalist from last year, absolutely star-studded. Tex Walker, unfortunately for the Cats, was having an absolute day out. He was kicking goals from 50 plus, and I think he ended the day with six overall. The Cats came back as we knew that they would. They kicked four goals to one in the third term, and by three-quarter time, they trimmed the margin back to 19 points. The Cats threatened throughout the final term as well, but Adelaide managed to hold on to secure a big upset and win the game by 12 points. When you look at the ladder makeup now, uh, Geelong obviously still in the thick of the premiership hunt, and then Adelaide are sort of in that bottom six, playing some good football, but you have to look back on that as a pretty shocking result. Later that night, Jesse, it was Hawthorne versus Essendon, and these two teams I didn't really know where to put in my ladder predictions heading into the season. Now we've seen how good Essendon have been this year, and Hawthorne have been sort of stinking it up at the bottom sort of three. So if you looked at the, the table right now and you saw how Essendon were performing compared to Hawthorne, you'd say Essendon would win this game. Wrong. Hawthorne won this game. Essendon got out to a very comfortable lead, so they were up by 39 at half time. And we thought this game was in the books, Jesse. We on the stream that same day we we flicked over to uh to Brisbane and Sydney. Sydney. But Hawthorne come back. It was the first time I'd ever seen Chenkut Jath play and he he's starting that game I remember and their young forwards as well. Brockman had a good game, Kazitsky as well. But yeah, they come back from bloody that thirty nine point half time lead and won the game by a point. It was an absolute nail biter. And I as I said I didn't know which way to tip in this game. I tipped Hawthorne but I wouldn't do that again because this was an absolute shot. Yeah, I mean, Essendon aren't so much better than Hawthorne that you'd think Hawthorne never in a million years could beat Essendon. Mm. But the fact that they came back from 39 points down, it was Essendon kicked 8-1 to one in the second and then Hawthorne flipped that and kicked 8-1 to one in the third and ultimately got the chocolates. The third game of this list so far is uh, its interesting because all three of the games so far took place on the same afternoon. Brisbane versus Sydney at the Gabba. Brisbane obviously being top two the previous two seasons. Don't generally lose too many games at the Gabba, particularly particularly to young developing sides and not many people would and rightfully so would have given City too much of a chance of a big upset here. They obviously finished bottom four the previous year. I have a lot of youth, had a few, I think three debutants maybe from mm -hmm. the top of my head. So any result here would have been an absolute shock, you could say. Sydney were in the peak of their season at this point, which we didn't see coming, Jesse, mm. because obviously they were, were semi-stinky last season. But it was that young talent that's almost fizzled out at this point in the year, come round 15. They're, they've sort of run out of legs, but your Errol Goldens, Logan McDonald, Wicks, um, off the top of my head, Chad Warner as well. They really lifted and, um, yeah, went up to the Gavin. Absolutely shocked the AFL world because no one saw that coming. Everyone thought Brisbane would just have an easy win, but it wasn't the case. And the fashion that it was done in, they got absolutely pumped. Very surprising. The Lions kicked the first three goals of the game, and we thought that this was going predictably, but the Swans then kicked 15 goals across the second and third terms to pretty much set up the shock upset. As you said, Golden and McDonald kicked three goals each. The Sydney youth really stepped up to the challenge. Sydney could still make the finals, but looking at you know how everything we know since, this is definitely a shocking result. A couple weeks later, Sydney had another shocking result, Jesse. They went to the MCG to face the Premiers. Now, not many teams beat the Tigers on their own deck, and not many teams that have finished in the bottom four the year before have done it. Nevertheless, the young, fearless Sydney Swans have gone to the MCG, and they won that game in a in a style that I've not seen before, Jesse. An early Saturday game, the Swans fans were out in numbers, supporting the, their old bloods, and uh, yeah, the young players again really stepped up. I think Buddy played in this game. Uh, he was back from injury. I don't think he had a massive game. And it was the young talent that we just spoke about that really took the limelight uh, in this game. Run Richmond off their feet. 
which we haven't really seen before. I think the shocking element of it, other than, you know, the Swans getting out to a well, eight-goal second term, setting up a 40-point halftime lead and then ultimately winning the game by 45, the, the other shock to it was the brand of football Sydney played as well. I think they were talking about it on the couch that Longmire seemed to have sort of reinvented his, his coaching philosophy and game plan style so, like emphatically that that was the shocking element as much as beating the Tigers mm-hmm. by 45 points on the MCG. They ended up withstanding a pretty strong challenge from the Tigers in the second half. Obviously, Richmond kind of clicked into gear, but Sid, but really mature performance and ultimately won by 45 points. Shocking results, but yeah, Richmond are right in the, the final speaks now. Yes, as we knew they would be. Next, we're going to take you on a little journey to round eight of this season. A few weeks later, of course, Geelong taking on Richmond in a grand final rematch at the MCG. Uh, Richmond sort of had the wood over Geelong in recent years. I generally expect them to, to win clashes between them. I think if you look at it, they generally win, um, even when both of these sides have been really good. It was an absorbing first half. Uh, the Tigers had a nine-point lead, and you couldn't really predict which way it was going to go. And the shocking element of this game was the cat side that came out after halftime and their three three headed dragon you could mm. say in uh, Gary Rowan Tom Hawkins and Jeremy Cameron they keep 15 goals between them and that's the difference between the Geelong side of 2020 and 2021 or at least the biggest difference is that Jeremy Cameron one of the best forwards in the comp is now lining up for him they ended up winning the game emphatically by 63 points. Again, Geelong beating Richmond, not a shock in isolation, but the emphatic nature of it. And uh, it was an important eight-point game, even at this point of the year. Uh, yeah, 63-point win, shocking. The non-shocking part is that Richmond have actually lost to the peop- the team that they've beaten in the grand final every year. True. So, um, if you look at that, 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 you could have tipped this game right. But um, anyway, next We one. didn't. <laughs> Hawthorne played North Melbourne down in Tasmania. Two Tasmanian sides. So yeah, the Hawks had sort of they'd had that good win against Essendon, um, but they'd been competitive most weeks. They had a good game against the Cats, so we knew that they weren't going to offer much this season. But against a North side that hadn't won up until this point, they it was looking like Hawthorne should win this game. It kind of almost became a matter of if not when North were going to clinch their first win. I know it's sort of a big statement yeah. to make, but North didn't really look that close to, to beating anyone. And I know the Hawks aren't completely invulnerable, as we know, but not many people gave the North a chance to win this game. They were down by 32 points in the second quarter. Mm. And I mean, bottom side, down by 32 points. Chalk it off. The game's done, you would think. Wrong. Shock. Surprise. Shazam. Wow. North. Surprise, Rave. Surprise, Rave. <laughs> Cam Zerha, Jai Simpkin, the, the primary guns off North Melbourne. Kanga, 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 and come back to win this game, Jesse. In that third quarter, they kicked four goals to one to cut that deficit down. And then in the last quarter, it was any team's game to win, and North won it in a thriller in the end. It remains to date the only win that North have had this year, and Hawthorne will be pretty filthy that they dropped that game. And I think the shocking element is not only that North won, but the 32 point margin they raised as well. So shame on you, Hawthorne. In round 10, we saw one of the games of the year, Adelaide hosting Melbourne at Adelaide Oval. And of course, the Ds going into this game were 9-0, looking almost invincible, you could say. Uh, obviously, we were expecting a, a loss would come at some point, but it didn't really look like it would be this game. Adelaide, uh, as we say, capable of beating some good teams, but to beat Melbourne is a whole different ask right now. On paper, the Ds far too strong for the Crows. You look on every line, the Ds have pretty much winners everywhere. They've got all Australians just about all over the park, but it's hard to keep a man like Tex Walker down. It was a close game throughout. I think the margin never got out past five points across any of the uh, of the changes. And I think yeah. at halftime, it was all even as well. But the Ds did break out to a 16-point lead deep into that fourth quarter. And the game looked just about over. The Ds were firing in that second half, Jesse. Clayton Oliver probably had his best game off the season Possibly in this of his game. career. It wasn't like a schmuck Melbourne side that showed up. This was the Melbourne Demons that we've been watching this season. And Adelaide just took it to him, played without any fear. Tex Walker iced the game with a minute left. Melbourne took the ball down their end, nearly had an opportunity to score. There was a, a rush. The ball was rushed over the line by an Adelaide player. It was controversial whether it was deliberate or not, but Adelaide got the win in the end by the skin of their teeth. Melbourne look like they're in the thick of the premiership hunt this year, and realistically for Adelaide, this is a development year, so this, I'll be surprised if it gets topped as their absolute highlight of 2021. One of the more stinky shocks of this season, Jesse, was... You've West... had a few stinky shocks in your time. <laughs> stinky shocks in my jocks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, merch idea. 
No, Jesse, it was the Western Bulldogs versus St. Kilda. This game ended in a margin of 111 points. Now, let's take you back down memory lane, Jesse. Mm. It's a Saturday night. We're getting ready to go to Metro's. Mm. Jeans We're, are half on. The jeans are... Why are we getting changed together? So, we watched Western Bulldogs play the Saints in finals last year. It was an absolute rip snorting game and the Saints come out on top they showed on that day that they were a better team than the Bulldogs in 2020 fast forward I don't know eight nine months the Bulldogs show up and absolutely clap this Saints side and it just shows how much the Bulldogs have developed as a side and how much the Saints have sunk as a side it was a massive shock for that reason. Yeah, it's a tough one to really isolate what's St. Kilda's lowest point of the season. There's been quite a few, as we've said uh, recently on your channel as well. But uh, to lose by 111 points by a team you knocked out of the finals the previous year without too many uh, extenuating circumstances, yeah, this is shocking for all the wrong reasons. The second last game on this list is West Coast taking on Essendon at Optus Stadium in round 11 of this season. Uh, heading to Perth for any team realistically is a tough ask. Even when the Eagles aren't so crash hot, they're really tough to beat mm -hmm. at Optus Stadium. Probably only happens once or twice a year on average. By round 11, the Eagles look pretty entrenched in the top eight and Essendon haven't really made a name for themselves. There was a bit of positivity around, you know, Darcy Parrish and improved performances, but they hadn't taken a big scalp until this game. Further than that, they trailed by 29 points in the second quarter of this game. And I remember remarking at the time that the Eagles were pretty much only so far in front because their forward line potency. Mm -hmm. And I think Essendon were doing a lot right to actually win the game, except on the scoreboard. And of course, the damn wall broke in the second half. I think in the final quarter, they had 22 inside 50s to just six and kicked three goals, seven to one straight kick. And the Eagles forward line potency was the only reason they didn't lose by more and Essendon realistically should have won by more and since that game Essendon have gotten the respect of people because they've claimed a big scout but to that point they hadn't and that was mm. why it was such a surprising result and it keeps Essendon at the moment sort of within touching distance of the eight um yeah it was a game that showed the fearlessness of the Bombers because the next week they took it right up to Richmond uh they didn't end up winning that game in dream time but they've had good results since they beat Hawthorne in another good game and it's been a great season for Essendon and that'll probably be up there with the pinnacle of the season for them I'd say in round 13 Friday night footy Hawthorne took on the Sydney Swans in Sydney and something that you've said to me quite a lot Jesse is Sydney they're not really a strong home side they might as well all play away because they're not that great at home and, and this was a prime example of that because Hawthorne a side that sits very deep in this table went to Sydney and you would have thought they were the better team if you hadn't watched football with you would have thought that Hawthorne were a top eight side and Sydney weren't because they were just in control of this game the whole way through. They ended up winning the game by 38 points and just to bite them on the arse, Jesse, Tom Mitchell come back to Sydney and just had an absolute field day. 34 disposals, chopped up. Jai Newcomb debuted, uh, broke an AFL record, 14 tackles on debut, which hadn't been done before. And they just got embarrassed, the Sydney Swans, after being in the top eight all season. Makes you think about Sydney. Where actually do they sit if they're losing games like this to Hawthorne at home? And... It's a feather in the cap of Hawthorne as well. Yeah, Sydney are a sort of young developing side. They've uh, got a lot of young quality and we were kind of expecting a form slump at some point but didn't expect it in such the dramatic fashion that Hawthorne, a team who were going through a horrible form slump, really bounced back and beat them by 38 points, which is a hefty margin. All right, guys, that is our list of 10 shocking results so far in the 2021 season. If you think there is one that we've missed, let us know in the comments below. As always, we invite you to subscribe to our channels if you enjoy the content. If you're looking for Drewsy's channel, go for the link in the description description subscribe to him we're trying to get 5k subs by the end of the month and Please. we need your help help us we need you as always like the video if you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video <laughs> oh is that the is that the outro okay <laughs>